Hi everybody, happy day. My name is Alicia Renice and I am an artist and I have one question for you. What would you do if you weren't afraid of anything? But first, I have to shout out my patrons. Thank you so much to my new Patreon supporters, Miss Carla Walker and Miss Proud Mary. Thank you so much for supporting my vision and my dream. You make this possible. You make it possible for me to be able to put out content and video and art and things like that and also be able to pay my bills. So if you would like uh, more content from me, free podcasts, free lives, interactive lives, art, downloadable art, merch, things like that, feel free to join my Patreon page. Um, I'll put the description below and it starts at $1. Also, if you can't support with money, that's fine as well. Thank you so much for being here. Feel free to like, subscribe, and share with somebody and hopefully they'll be encouraged by these videos as well. Thank you so much. So yeah, so I asked that question to you. What would you do if you weren't afraid of anything? I ask myself that question all the time because that's the kind of life I'm trying to live. I'm trying to curate my life so that I'm actually fulfilled and I'm actually doing the things that I actually want to do in life, you know? Fear, we talked about fear before and how fear is well-wishing and how we need fear to survive in the world and how, you know, fear has its place. But when it steps out of its place and gets in the, in the driver's seat as opposed to the passenger seat or the back seat, that's when it becomes a problem. So check out that video we talked about before. So now I wanna pose this question to you. What would you do if you weren't afraid of anything? First of all, leave it in the comment below. I'm trying to figure out how to make your answers into art. I'm, I'm really big into storytelling and really big into collaborative work and art and things like that. And so I wanna know from you, what would you do if you weren't afraid of anything? And it's really an interesting question to ask yourself because you realize how much you really let fear stop you from doing something. Would you quit a job? Would you move across the country? Would you move into an RV like me and my husband did? Um, that was really scary for us to do, you know, to leave behind everything we knew. All we knew was the DMV area. And so the DMV area, if you're not familiar, is like DC, Maryland, and Virginia. It's like around DC, just that area around DC. And so both of us are from there and that's all we knew, you know, that's all we knew besides family in other states, that was our home. And so my husband and I decided to pack up move into an RV full time and travel around the world. And you can, I have another page for that where we have a community of other RVers and people who are interested in that. And I'll put the link somewhere here, but, um, but you can check that out in your own time. But it was really scary. It was really scary for me to leave behind the home that I knew, to leave behind, behind my mom. You know, um, she's the only mom I had all my life. You know, she's a single parent. It's usually me and her. And it was really scary for us to leave but I'm so glad that we left. I'm so glad that we left because I realized all the stuff I was fearing was not real. One, another reason I was afraid of leaving is because I was afraid of leaving my friends. My friends are my family, like they are my family. And so I was afraid that our relationships would disintegrate and would break apart if we moved. And what I found was they actually became stronger. When I came back, it was like we never left. You know, we picked up where we left off. Um, you know, I, would, I can still call them, like this is the age of technology. I can FaceTime them. I don't have an iPhone, but we can do like, you know, duo or something with my friends. Like all the fears were quelled. They were like gone. I was like, oh, okay. Even the fear of not having money, of running out of money, which we did when we were on the road. We ran out of money and we came back home. So it's like, okay, the worst case scenario here is that we just have to go back home and pick up and try again. Why is that stopping us from trying? You know, and it's much the same for our lives. Like we have so many things in our life that we don't allow ourselves to do because we're afraid of the outcome. We're afraid of the effect it's gonna have on us, on our community, on our family. We're afraid of things that probably won't even happen or things that will take care of themselves. Much like I talked about if we ran out of money on the road. I'm employable, I have skills, I have a degree. Not worth much though, but I have a degree and that's like basic one-on-one -on -one for anybody. Or even if I didn't have a degree, I can always work at McDonald's. McDonald's is always hiring. You know what I'm saying? Like I can all, not saying that these prices are fair, that they're, char that they're paying you, but that's a whole other discussion for a whole other video. But yeah, minimum wage needs to be raised, period. I don't know if that's clear or not. But the idea that I'm always gonna be like, oh no, I'm gonna be, no, Alicia, you have skills that you can use to get a job. That's the worst that could happen. And so really, I want you to think about it. Like the things that you're afraid of doing, what is stopping you from doing it? What is the worst case scenario? What is the worst case scenario? Again, I'll use myself as an example. If I wanna be a singer, which I do, and I start putting my music out there and I start sharing demos and I start doing lives and stuff with people, what is the worst thing that could happen? For a live, maybe no one shows up. Okay, I'm not gonna die. 
<laughs> I'm not going to die. And I can also keep doing it. I can also market it better. Maybe there's something, you know, I'm not doing right, you know, or maybe I haven't found my audience yet, but my stuff is still important. My stuff is still important to do and, and to complete and to put out there um, for music, for performing. What is the worst that can happen? People talk over me or people boo me. Okay. Like, even though it sucks, I'm not, I'm not diminishing that because that is traumatic. That is traumatic. That has not happened to me. Thank God. But like, People can boo me. Okay, so then I can make it my choice to either not perform at that venue anymore. Maybe it's the wrong people. Maybe it's the wrong audience. Or maybe I just become better. You know, the thing is, you're not going to die. And I, and I talked about this in the previous video. The fear is death. The fear is death of your social status, of your people rejecting you. Like, that is a form of death. That is a form of loss. And so we try to protect ourselves and put ourselves in these bubbles to prevent ourselves from harm. And that's what fear does. That's why I said it's well-wishing. It's well-meaning. But then we stop living, we stop ourselves from living the lives we actually want to live. And to me, that is more, that is, that is more sad. That is sadder than you trying. That is, that is more of a death to me. You not trying at all is more of a death to me than you actually trying and you failing at something. You know what I mean? I don't want to live a life where I never tried. I don't want to live a life where I never put in the effort because I'm afraid of what people think or afraid of what people say. Even as I do this, I'm talking here and I'm afraid to post this. I can, t nine times out of 10, I'm afraid to post this. I'm afraid of what other people think. And not even here because on YouTube, it's like, oh, you know, people don't really know me like that. But on my Instagram, it's scary because the people that follow me know me, know me. You know what I mean? And so I would, it was, it's so much easier to try to build an audience with people who don't know me except for this, as opposed to like dreaming in front of people I know. And for some people it's the opposite, you know, and I can't tell you why. But for me, it's because I fear their judgment. I fear their judgment in like social circles. Are they talking about me? Do they still love me? Do they still like me? Like silly things that one, I'm validated whether I do this or not. If I never post another video, if I never write another song, if I never take another photograph, I am worthy. I am loved. I am whole. I am still Alicia. I'm still Alicia. Alicia just happens to be an artist, right? And the people who love me, Love me if I'm an artist or if I'm not, if I'm in corporate America. Like my best friends don't care that I'm doing art. They're proud of me for doing it because they believe in me. But if I decided to stop doing art, they're not gonna stop loving me, you know? But that is the fear. That is the fear and it's so silly because these random people on my YouTube page who dislike videos or who leave negative comments and all, I don't know them. I don't know them and if I do, that's messed up. They're trolling because they don't ever reveal themselves, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna stop living my life for people who don't know me behind a keyboard? I'm not gonna do what I wanna do because I'm afraid of people judging me from behind a keyboard, which they wouldn't say to my face, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's crazy. It's really crazy when you really think about it, you know, but it makes sense because we want to be comfortable, we want to be secure, we wanna be sure that something is gonna work before you even try it. And what I challenge you to do is to do it in spite of fear, to do it when you're not ready, to do it when, you, when you're afraid, to do it when it's messy, to do it when you don't have all the answers and all the algorithms and all the analytics and all this bull crap that is stopping you from actually pursuing your dream. So again, I ask you, what would you do if you weren't afraid of anything? Now that's never gonna happen. That's one thing you should know. Stop waiting till you're not afraid. That's not gonna happen. That's not how life works. That's not how this body that God put us in works. Fear and trepidation is always gonna be a part of us, right? But the Bible says he has not given us a spirit of fear, right? No, he has not given us a spirit of fear. Like he's given us a sound mind, like other things, but also a sound mind, which a sound mind will tell you, I'm not gonna die if I go out here and I get booed. I'm not gonna die if nobody purchases anything, if nobody likes a post I post. But what I am gonna do is to keep showing up and to keep proving to people. You know, there's this, there's this study that says it takes people seven times to really take it seriously, to see something, to take it seriously. That's why when you're watching TV, the same commercial comes on over and over and over again. Because it takes a minute for us to get, unless the, unless the you know, the commercial is funny or like shocking, like Geico commercials are really funny to me. Like you know, stuff like that. That's why they're funny because they want to get your attention. But if it's a basic commercial, they're going to keep showing it to you over and over and over again. They're going to keep playing the jingle over and over and over and over again to get it in your head. That's why they pay for so much playtime because they know it's going to take a minute for you to recognize, oh snap, maybe I should try that cheeseburger. Oh, hmm, maybe I should look at that watch. 
hmm, maybe I should look at that phone. That iPhones can do that? What? Like, and no hate to the iPhone people because I have an Android and I'm very secure and confident in what I have. But no, the idea is that marketing works. And in the same way, you can't put up something one time and be like, oh, no one cared. I'm going to stop doing it. And I say this to you because I did the same thing. I do that. I say, no one paid attention to my thing. No one, no one came to my live. No one, well, sis, th- are you going to keep doing it or not? Like, you should keep doing it. One, you should do it because you like to do it. You should do it because it's fun. This is fun for me. Offering encouragement to people is fun for me because it's also cathartic in the way that it's encouraging myself, too, and challenging myself, too, you know, to do the things that I want to do. My whole point is stop letting fear take the driver's seat. Stop letting fear take the driver's seat. It's going to be there. It's going to be loud at first. It's going to be um, distracting. It's going to be like, hey, 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 watch out, watch out. No, 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 no. Maybe we shouldn't go anywhere. Maybe we should stay here because it's safe inside the house. But also inside the house is where depression lies because dreams don't just die. They don't just like, oh, well, I'm going away. Dreams don't die. They sit there and like, hey, why aren't you giving me any airtime? Why aren't you giving me any room to breathe? Like they, they become almost cancerous if you keep them inside. Let that stuff out. Take a walk. Like, if you don't want to drive a long distance, go for a walk first. Tell someone your dreams. Tell me your dreams. Put it in the description. What are you afraid to admit to yourself that you would do if you were not afraid? Let me know. Put it down. And let's let's start doing this. Let's start doing this. Let's start holding each other accountable. Tell people that you can trust. That's another thing. Stop telling people the stuff that people that, that are evil. I had an ex-friend tell me that my music was trash and that nobody liked it and da 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 And so if I didn't have edifying and loving people around me, I would take what she said as truth. But I know that's not true. She just mean. You know what I mean? Like, set yourself up for success, not failure. Okay? Put, if you had to put post-it notes, I used to do this. Put post-it notes everywhere, encouraging words. Put people around you that you can check in with. I have a friend that I can check in with and be like, yo, I need some encouragement. And she will get, offer me encouragement like that. My husband will offer me encouragement like that. He will, he will silence the noise in my head so that I can focus on creating the life that I actually want to live, you know, so I can work through the fear. Because like I said, you can't get rid of it. You can only work through it. And so do the work. Do the work. What would you do if you were not afraid of anything. If you weren't afraid of, if you were a superwoman, what would you do? If you knew you could not fail, what would you do? Because honestly, you're not failing. Anytime that you, even if it doesn't turn out the way you want to, anytime you do something is a success because you learn something, you gain more experience. You're a better person from failing than you are at not doing anything at all. You are not winning by sitting, and I'm not trying to shame you either, but you are not better than the person actually out there trying to chase their dream because you decide to play it safe. You are not a better person for denying yourself the things that you really want to do by playing it safe because you're under the guise that you work a nine to five. And again, I'm not shaming anybody who does this, who wants to, because there are people who want to do this and that's fine. But there are other people who are afraid of going back to school and learning something, who are afraid of starting their own business or becoming an artist or whatever, taking up a hobby and not saying you have to reject all nine to five work and whatever. No, you can do that. You can do a nine to five and you can chase your dream, but stop pretending that you're happy. Stop pretending that you're fulfilled. Stop pretending that like you being a model citizen is bringing you joy because it's not. And we can all see it from how you tear down other people, from how you tear down yourself, from how critical you are. If you were giving yourself the chance to be free, you would be so joyful. And I want you to give yourself that opportunity. So I hope this makes sense. And this is more of a rant than like instructional. Um, but I'm really hoping that you take this to heart. If you have to rewatch this, rewatch it. If you have to share it with somebody, share it with somebody. If you have to let somebody know like what your dreams are and what you want to do to hold yourself accountable, do what you have to do to make it, to give yourself a chance. Like, share, subscribe. Again, let me know in the comment section, what would you do if you were not afraid? If you were not afraid of anything, what would you do? I shared a couple of mine. I hope that you can share a couple of yours. And that we can start to get along and move forward. And again, I want to make some art from your answer. So please feel free to leave a response, to leave a comment. Um, Again, check out the Patreon page if you want more of this. And until next time, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. Keep creating. Keep going. Keep working through fear. It is worth it. It is worth it. And again, I'll type up my um, things I would do if I wasn't afraid as well below. So I can share it with y'all and y'all can hold me accountable. Okay, so until next time, y'all, be beautiful, be well, be whole. Thank you so much. Much love and much joy. Talk to you later. Bye.